Hello, and welcome to Faith and Fame, where gospel artists tell their own stories in their own words. I'm Leland Jones. Charlie Daniels began his career before most of his contemporaries in music today were even born. From his early playing days in small clubs to the Southern rock anthems he recorded in the 70s, to his Dove Award winning gospel work in the 90s, Charlie has created a blueprint for career longevity and success. Along the way, he matured from the long-haired country boy to an outspoken proponent of conservative values. His story begins in the logging country of North Carolina. Somebody, somewhere, somebody help me up in prayer. Cause I was so far down, I had to reach up to touch the ground. Jesus said, I was born in the tidewater part of the state where the, the rivers are wide. You know, it's not very far from the ocean. And I came up in a timber and farming background. My folks were basically blue collar people. I came up in a Christian family, a uh, God-fearing family, a uh, loving family. Had a great childhood. Uh, my dad was in a timber business. He knew more about a pine tree than anybody that I ever knew. I'm the only child. I tell people when my, my mom and dad had me that they just got disgusted and quit having kids. <laughs> Or maybe I was made for twins and wasn't separated, I don't know. My parents instilled honesty, respect, hard work ethic, work, giving the man a day's work for a day's pay, uh, belief in God, uh, trying to keep your feet on the path of righteousness. And of course, that trail gets slippery and I slipped way off of it for after I got away from home for a while. But. Uh, all the good things, all the all the things, the morals, the moral values that uh, I feel a child could should be raised with. Uh, anything that I have ever done in my life, any wrong, any slippage that I have ever done, anything bad, I can never blame on the way I was raised because I was not raised that way. I was raised in a very loving, uh, very God-fearing, believing background. I was around a lot of gospel music, a lot of the old time. I still to this day love the old time gospel music. I love the old Amazing Graces and old Rugged Crosses and, and those kind of songs. It, it, and to me, they will never be replaced by anything. I love the new music. In fact, I've recorded some of it. But uh, nothing will ever take the place of those old, those old songs. I truly love them. I had a friend named Russell Palmer that had a, I went up to his house one afternoon. I had no idea he had a guitar. He had an old Stella guitar. And he was, he knew about two and a half chords on it. And I had always wanted to learn to play. I never had a chance. And I said, you got to teach me that. And he did. And one day somebody showed up with a mandolin and I started fooling with that. And somebody showed up with a fiddle and I started fooling with that. And just trial and error. I'm not a natural musician. I have to work a little harder. I have to practice a little more. Music was an obsession with me. I didn't want to escape, I just wanted to go other places. I wanted to travel. When I first started out, longevity was one of my big goals, was I wanted to do this as long as I possibly could. I still have that aspiration and that desire. Uh, but when I left North Carolina to go other places, it was not thinking so much about escaping North Carolina as it was going somewhere that would further my career. I came to Nashville in 1967 at the behest of a friend of mine by the name of Bob Johnston. I had met him when he was a, a songwriter and a fledgling record producer. And he said, Charlie, why don't you come to Nashville and see what you, you can get going? You know, you're just beating your brains out in these beer joints and, you know, why don't you come down? And the decision was easy. Uh, I came to Nashville <laughs> with the clutch out of my car and the $20 bill in my pocket. Uh, Bob helped me. I mean, Bob would loan me money and I would pay him back when I would get my session checks or whatever. But that's where it started. Uh, I, I never felt down about that. I never felt, you know, I always look, things can always be better. Things can always get better. You can make things be better if you get out and believe in what you're doing and you work hard at it. It's kind of like getting married. It's kind of like forsaking all others. If you want to be a musician, if you want to play music for a living, I would think most anything else, you got to give it up and go play music. If you're not good enough to do that, then you don't need to do it anyway. But once you do decide, there's no yellow brick road. There's no map to this business. It's a day to day to day thing. I was on a peninsula. I was out on a peninsula. I had nowhere to go. I didn't want to go back this way and I couldn't go anywhere else because I'd run in the ocean. And I did not want to turn around and go back. 
and that's kind of how I was. I was just there. I mean, I just when I, when I came into the music business, I burned the boats. That this this was going to be it. This is this is all. Somehow, some way, somewhere, I'm going to be playing music somewhere because it's. I love it so much. It's such a big part of my life. I've been thinking back over my life. When you look back at the career of Charlie Daniels, it's hard to imagine there was ever a time that he struggled. But when he first moved to Nashville in the late 60s, his rock-tinged country style didn't gel with the smoother sound favored at the time in Music City. But when the King himself records your first song and Bob Dylan personally requests for you to play on his albums, well, it's safe to say you're on your way. I never knew it until after the fact. And oddly enough, it was years before I, I moved to Nashville when I was visiting a friend here. And uh, we wrote the song together, in fact. And Elvis was in the studio. We knew he was in the studio downtown at uh, RCA Studios. But we had no idea he was recording our song. And to think that Elvis Presley would record one of my songs that, that I wrote, it just totally blew me away. When I came to Nashville, music was a lot tamer then. Country music was a lot tamer than it is now. Uh, I came off of 13 years on the road with, you know, with screaming and being bluesy and stuff, and I didn't fit in very well on the regular sessions. And I say that with no animosity and no bitterness because I just didn't. But Bob Dylan was coming to town. I was working in a nightclub, and Bob Johnston, who was his producer, my friend, and I said, you know, can you let me play on one Bob Dylan session? Because I really like Bob Dylan. I, I admire him, and I, I just like to always be able to say I played on one session. And we, I went down and did the early session, I think the six o'clock session or something, and I was packing my guitars up, getting ready to go to the gig. And Dylan, Bob Dylan asked Bob Johnson, he said, where's he going? He said, he's leaving, I've got another guitar player coming in. He said, I don't want another guitar player, I want him. Whew. I mean, it was like, Bob Dylan said that about me, the guy that was out front of all the new stuff that was going on, and the father of a whole new way of thinking about music, Bob Dylan said that about Charlie Daniels. And I'll always be indebted to Dylan for saying that, because you know, he'll, he'll have no idea what it meant to me to hear it and for him to say that, because it just, it was such a, it was such a pat on the back. It just meant a lot. Now, the devil went down to Georgia and he was looking for a soulless deal. He was in the bind because he was way behind. He's willing to make a deal. When he came across this young man, saw him on the fiddle and playing it hot, and the devil jumped up on the hickory stump and said, Boy, let me tell you what, you probably didn't even know it, but I'm a fiddle player too. And if you care to take it there, I'll just make a bet with you. Now, you play pretty good fiddle boy, but let's give the devil this due. I bet this fiddle of gold against your soul is like I'm better than you. Well, I said, my name's Johnny, and it might be a sin, but I'm going to take that bed you're going to grab because I'm the best that's ever been. Johnny, rise up your bowl, play your fiddle hard. Cause I was this in Georgia and the devil deals the cards. If you win, you get this shiny fiddle made of gold. If you lose, the devil gets you so. Fingertips, he rolled it up his bow, and then he pulled his bow across the strings, and it made an evil hiss. And a band of demons joined in, and it sounded something like this. Devil Went Down to Georgia was one that I felt like they would play, but I had no idea. I mean, when it started taking off, it was like a rocket ship. We were doing all right at the time. We had had some, sold some records and stuff, but uh, it just took us to a whole different level. We were selling out the Nassau County Coliseum two nights in a row. We were selling out big halls, I mean, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and, and that happened really, really fast. It just was like in a few weeks or certainly a few months that the band had grown in statue uh, and expanded. It was just literally mind-boggling. When the devil finished, Johnny said, you know, you're pretty good, old son. You just flopped down in that chair out there. I'm going to show you how this stuff's done. Fire on the mountain, run, boys, run. Down to the house of the rising sun. But at a time like that, everything starts whirling around you. And when you're successful, uh, you, a lot of times you're surrounded by people that, that, yes, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right, no matter what you do. I've never done that. I've always had people, some people with me that would tell me, you know, you're wrong, or this ain't right, or, or you know, would, be, would level with me and tell me things. But you have to be sincere with this business. You can't treat it like a toy. Uh, you can't treat it like something frivolous. 
because it's not. It's a very, very serious business. And because it was glamorous, and he is to some extent from the outside, people think that the whole thing's that way. But for every hour that is glamorous, there are many, many hours in the day that are not necessarily glamorous. And if you're not going to enjoy those two, don't do it. Volunteer Jam was uh, supposed to be a one-time thing. We were doing an album called Fire on the Mountain, and which was our first gold and subsequently multi-platinum album that we did. We wanted to do two songs live. We wanted to do Orange Blossom Special, a song I wrote called No Place to Go. Uh, the only place we could attract a crowd was here in our hometown in Nashville. And after we got finished playing, we all got together and jammed. It was such a good time. It, it sold out. Uh, the very first one, and, and we said, hey, this is great. Uh, maybe we should do this again next year. The kind of music you played was not so important on the Volunteer Jam. It was that you played it good, that you had something the crowd wanted to hear, basically. It was all we really cared about. You know, it's all different kinds of music, and that's, a, to me, you know, there's only 12 notes of music in the world. You play them in different octaves, you play them in different ways, but that's the same thing. You know, Beethoven dealt with the same 12 notes of music that uh, Roy Acuff dealt with. He just did them in a different way. I ain't nothing but a simple man. They call me a redneck, a reckon that I am, but this thing's going on with me mad down to the core. I have to work like a dog to make ends meet. There's crooked politicians and crime in the street, and I'm madder than hell, and I ain't a gonna take it no more. Tell our kids to just say no And then some panty waist judge lets a drug dealer go He slaps him on the wrist and he turns it back out on the town But if I had my way with people selling dope I'd take a big tall tree and a short piece of rope I'd hang them up behind a little swing till the sun goes down Well, you know what's wrong with the world today People done gone put their Bibles away by the law of the jungle, not the law of the land. Well, the good book says it, so I know it's the truth. And I pull an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You better watch where you go and remember where you've been. That's the way I see it. I'm a simple man. It doesn't take long to figure out that Charlie Daniels is a one of a kind and his own man. But there's a lot more to him than what you may gather from listening to his songs. The hard-working entertainer is also an extremely devoted family man, and he's got some very strong beliefs and opinions, especially when it comes to his music. My wife is, uh, you know, the Bible says the two shall become one. She's part of me, and I'm part of her. I mean, it's like this. We are one. I can't imagine my life without my wife. She's everything to me. I mean, I cannot spend too much time around my wife. Some days it's 24 hours. A lot of days it's 24 hours. Never get tired of it. Always enjoy. If she goes to the store and comes back, I'm glad when she gets back. If I'm gone for a few days and I come home, I can't wait to get home and see my wife. Uh, my son, I feel the same way about him. My wife and myself are gone on the road, you know, in the summertime. When we get back, we can't wait to see him. My family is everything to me. That's the first thing in my life, right after God, is family. And then it spreads out into other things. I had always wanted to do a gospel album. I had always intended to do gospel, but uh, I've always, or, or up to that time, was always on major record labels or, for many years. And major record labels don't do gospel albums very much anymore. It's left to people who specialize, who have the expertise in how to market and merchandise a, a gospel record to get it to the right places. Several years ago, when we were on Capitol, we were approached by the Sparrow people. And they approached us about doing a, a gospel album. And uh, I said, yeah, definitely, I want to do it. So I started you know, writing songs. I had a few ideas here and there, but I really basically sat down and started writing songs for it. And we got ready, we came in and recorded. Oh, I was very much gratified. But I, I had people ask me, yeah, people are weird, you know. What are you fans gonna think about you doing a gospel album? I said, well, you know, I've been doing gospel music in this show for years, and I don't think anything about it. I've always done gospel music, or not always, but I've, for the last many years I've done gospel music in the show. And the way I feel about it is, is I'm going to do gospel music. I'm going to do it in the show. I'm going to do it on records. And uh, I'm, you know, if Jesus can't go with me, I don't want to go. I don't go anywhere he can't go. 
if it's on TV, if it's on radio, if it's in the recording studio or on stage. If he can't go with me, I don't want to, I don't want to be there by myself. So that's how I feel about that. I was on the wrong track like a runaway freight train. Somebody somewhere. I had some real criticism from people that I didn't do all gospel songs. I had never claimed to do all God. I've, I've never claimed to do all gospel songs. When I do a bit of Grand Crusade, I do all gospel songs. But when I go on stage, ordinarily I do secular music and I do I throw in a gospel song. I'd throw it in. It's part of my show as a regular on a regular basis. But hey, you know, I don't claim to be, you know, a preacher. I've not been called to preach. All I say is, I do a family show. You can bring a child of any age to any show that we do, and you will not be embarrassed. We will not do anything to embarrass you or do anything that kid should not hear. If he's three years old or 16 years old, there's nothing wrong with secular music. I mean, it's like the, 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 uh, there's something wrong with some secular music. Some secular music is downright destructive. I'd be the first to admit it. But as far as if, if, if you pick up a guitar and play a song, it's not a gospel song. It's not. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I don't do songs that, uh, and I never let the bad guy win. Uh, I watch my lyrics very closely as to what I write. I haven't always done that, but uh, I do now. And I see nothing wrong with with secular music. I see nothing wrong with playing secular music. That's what I make my living doing. If somebody's a carpenter, they don't preach a sermon every time they drive build a house or drive a nail, or if, if somebody's a plumber, every time they you know, go and put a sink in, they don't turn around and preach a sermon to the person. But people still want to apply that to my life, that because I have recorded gospel music and recorded albums, that I should just you know, start doing all gospel music. And that's, that's not what I do. It don't bother me. I mean, I'm far enough along that it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. You say what they want to about me. I mean, that's... You know, my life and my Christian life is between me and God and not between me and any, anybody on earth. Songs of Lonely Pine Trees are, is, are a collection of the old bluegrass songs. When I first started playing music, I, I played bluegrass, so I, I was familiar with the old tunes, the old Bill Monroe, Flat and Scruggs, um, Don Reno and Red Smiley, uh, well, there's a bunch of them, but <laughs> may or may not recognize, but those old songs. And so they, I was approached about doing it. I said, yeah, let's do it. And I started picking out songs, and we got them together and went over with the Dale McCrory band and Earl Scruggs, Mac Wiseman, some people, and, and did it. And I'm pretty happy with it, really. Blessing and desire. Uh, when you add those two things together, uh, it makes for a lot. I 
every day, every time. Uh, uh, I just thank God I make a living doing something I enjoy so much because I really enjoy this. To be able to go into a recording studio and, re studio and record new songs, you know, to write new songs, to keep the the energy level up and the and the creative level up, to be able to to create new things, it's a blessing. So it comes down to blessing. Then I have the desire to do it. So you add blessing. That desire to blessing equals, you know, a long career. We hope you've enjoyed spending time with Southern rocker gospel artist and pioneer Charlie Daniels. Please join us again on the next Faith and Fame when another gospel artist will tell their own story in their own words. I'm Leland Jones and I'll see you then. I ain't got no money but I dang sure got it made cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing if I can't get it on my